choose New York like over other cities? I've done many cities around the world. I've done Paris, I've done Israel, I've done Tel Aviv actually in Israel, I've done Hebron, I've done Los Angeles, I've done Miami. And I just felt like it, I, I owed it to New York in a sense. So I felt that if I'm going to put these kind of discreet artwork up, I need a lot of foot traffic and I need uh, people to actually have their eyes open a little bit, not just have the garters up and be going, traveling to a destination. And so it seemed like the right spot. But the more I put up and the more I'm in New York, the more I hear I should put it in places like Chinatown or Brooklyn or other places like that. Right now I have 14 sculptures, pieces, or the, the relief sculptures that I put in the street. But I only chose nine for New York specifically. And I specifically chose underlying theme of consumerism because I feel that a lot of people in New York have this consumeristic mentality that they need to have the best and they have to make a lot of money and they need to be financially stable but on the other hand when you look at New York you also have a lot of creative people so I also brought creative artworks like the love versus the money and the love vault so I, I mixed and picked what I had to make sure it, it would please the audience of New York but also speak to the everyday New Yorker. I don't want to put something up that a New Yorker won't understand because it doesn't face them every day. Even if you give it your all and you do your best, sometimes New Yorkers don't want to make that leap to appreciate it. So I've been putting up a lot of artwork in New York and they're, they're just kind of stubborn. People are kind of, kind of stubborn. Uh, they don't take the time to say, oh, this is, this is nice, or there's a lot of effort put into it. They just, they're used to having a clean wall, so they're gonna clean the wall right away. They're not gonna take the time to appreciate it, which I completely did not expect from the New York mentality and lifestyle from what I've heard from other artists. So that was interesting, but I've also learned that everyone works hard in New York. There's, there's, like in LA or other places, there's a lot of slackers, not slackers, but people who are more into enjoying themselves, and in New York, Everyone's mentality is let me work from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., sleep a little bit and get back to work. And that's why I brought the hamster wheel to New York because that's really the New York mentality, New Yorkers mentality. And which city would you say has been the hardest to place items around so far? Have you got into any trouble? I brought into a little bit of trouble in, um, in L.A. I brought in stopped by the police a couple times. Hebron, Israel was tricky. I was wanted by, I had an APB out for my arrest. I made a little YouTube channel about my tour, my world tour. It, it kind of explains what happened, that I was doing a lot of graffiti, um, tagging, and as I was walking back to where I was staying, a soldier ran up to me and said, um, the police announced over the walkie-talkies that a man with a ponytail, a white t-shirt, and a GoPro is wanted. And he didn't believe I, I deserved to be taken in, so he, he helped hide me from the police, which was really cool. And how did you get into art? I never really wanted to be an artist. Um, my dad works in art direction, and he was a heavy smoker. And I, would always, I was always trying to get him to quit smoking. I, after speaking to him a million times about it, I realized that words wouldn't affect him. So I created my first piece, Morons, and I put it in his bedroom. And when he got home from work and saw it, he quit smoking that day. Like cold turkey, like I was, I was shocked my mom was, everyone was like, what? You got him to quit smoking? And um, he gave me a couple hundred dollars for it and he said if it affected me, it could affect other people. But my dad saw that I got into Cal Arch, which was the number one conceptual art school in the country. So um, he, without telling me, he paid my first year's tuition as a gift. And, I went to Cal Arts for a year. I applied to Les Beaux Arts de Paris as a joke, as a bet with my dad. He bet me a thousand dollars I couldn't get in because he was from France, and that's like his, that was his dream school, and he never got to go. And it's the best art school in the world. And I applied as a joke with him. We bet a thousand dollars, and um, I applied, and I, we didn't hear back for months. And actually, on his birthday, I received my letter from the school. Since we had bet a thousand dollars, I was like, I looked at my dad. I'm like, you open it. And he opens it and he goes, I don't know if I can cuss, but he called me a mother effer and he's like, you got in. <laughs> so then uh, I packed the bag and I went to Paris and that's when I created the plaster frames and everything. And that's when I met my friend, uh, Rue de Monter, who's actually with me in New York. Um, and he came to do some street art with me. So. Before was at $11. These are all like, these are all the LA bills, the limited edition bills. I found them on eBay and then after, um, it sold for 305 with 88 bids, so it's 
pretty crazy for a single dollar.